Welcome back to the Guardian with Joy and Holly radio show. Happy you're with this. Falls here, Holly. Garden's about done. Watering has been an issue for many gardeners throughout, not this year, but years and years because we forgot, said we won't forget, we fu- we did forget. Tree diaper takes the guesswork out of it. Absolutely. If your plants could talk or could t- could have talked, they may have said that, you know, maybe they weren't being properly watered, either too much, too little. How do you water properly? You can take the guesswork out by using the tree diaper. Tree diaper is a revolutionary way to water your plants that stabilizes soil moisture by taking up excess water and slowly releases it when the plants need it. The tree diaper is filled with water from the rain or when you water and slowly releases water over three weeks. No pipes, hoses or electricity needed. Whether you're a first-time gardener or advanced, Tree Diaper will improve the way you water your plants. Made in the USA, you can find out all the sizes they have available at TreeDiaper.com. That is TreeDiaper.com. Well, when I uh, tease the uh, hold on for the break, we're going to talk about algae bloom. I know some of you who understand what algae bloom is probably were yelling at the radio or your podcast device going, well, that's a big, that's a big farmer industry problem. That's not a backyard gardening industry uh, problem. I, I'm not contributing to algae bloom, Holly, but I think if we use anything, even if it's not a visible, oh, well, we still have done something to encourage the use of and the cause of what's going on. Absolutely. And it, it is a, it is a problem for, all of us because it does affect aquatic life and it also it's not sightly to look at joey and i were visiting his family and we stopped at the uh what was that city lake the city lake and i said look at all this algae bloom and that's what inspired this topic topic. and it it took away from the beauty of that park the park was a very nice park and and algae bloom is just like so 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 what is algae bloom and and let's get to the point of why does it exist or what's causing it to exist sure so algae bloom you you kind of probably have seen it it looks like this green um like a a light green murkiness just floating on the top of the water usually near like a shoreline of some sort whether it be a lake or um even the ocean but a lot of times it ends up in like the, the bay areas so just along the shoreline kind of and what happens is that it can look like a foam or a scum. And it sometimes it's different colors, but up around here, it's usually about greenish. And it's from runoff, from chemical runoff. And what happens is, especially with something like nitrogen, from whether it be farms, golf, L- L- golf L- courses, runoff, yeah, runoff applications, um, things like that, it feeds the algae and the algae just grows, essentially. W- which that lake that we talked about, a good portion of that lake was completely covered in algae bloom in the green slime. The reason why it damages or kills aquatic life is twofold. One, it creates a barrier from preventing the, the, the fish from getting and eating things that are landing on top of the water. And it doesn't, what is it? It doesn't allow oxygenization to occur right. and suffocates the, the the aquatic life out. And we're not t- talking fish. We're talking snails and, and uh, snakes and other things. Everything that you don't see, frogs, all these things, it has a effect to it. Correct. And you might think, okay, you know, this is, this is a newer issue or I don't live by a pond. I don't live by a lake. Yeah, we can't. Uh, Or just think that this, this isn't a a now issue. Right. But what happens is that this has actually been occurring. There's been talk about um, algae bloom from late, from the 1500s. So it's been a thing. Um, and it just keeps. It typically getting... occurs more prevalent in the spring during the r- first rain runoff right. of all the land, and then we see a big bloom of it, which they call a bloom, a big explosion of growth in Lake Michigan, uh, in the local news where we're at. But also we hear it about the other uh, Great Lakes, and then the you know you got the Mississippi River issue down by the Louisiana, the dead zone down there, and just little lakes, yes, like your city lake. So, yeah, um, and it also can be harmful if you swim in it. It can get on your skin. It can cause, you know, if you have sensitive skin, it can cause issues like that. If you're if you like to let your pets run in the water, things like that. Um, Well, I assume that if it's thick enough, you can impede your potential mobility in the water and could cause issues of uh, droundage um, in some Right. Common sense thinking here. Wait, go ahead. So there's a few different ways that it can be 
controlled. But the biggest thing is, is that as a, as a homeowner, gardener, et cetera, is to use chemicals sparingly because everything that you use a lot of times, especially if it's a high chemical based fertilizer, herbicide, fungicide, whatever that clings to water molecules and the water molecules go drains into the sewer system and the sewer system runs off into a lot of times big body water. And we've seen this on TV and sometimes in person where they're fertilizing the lawn and the way it goes down the sidewalk and on the street and it's just a, a Mach 4 to get the job done to get to the next one for money, money, money. And that's that's what their job is. As quick as you can get out of the truck, get out of the truck, spread the fertilizer, get it in the truck and keep moving because we've got jobs to do. And uh, environmental um, requirements or rules kind of get pushed to the side because money rules. Right. And then if you go to a golf course and you, you know, see that they're using high amounts of chemicals, maybe consider talking to the person who runs the golf course. And if there's an alternative or maybe you live on a golf course. Right. Well, or something. And, 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 you know, I'm going to stereotype this, but people, there are certain places in America where country clubs have golf courses and it's the people that have the deepest pockets get to tell what what to do and how to do it and tells everybody else to keep quiet about it right but maybe you have the friend with the deep pockets and they're well yeah you know you want to you want to express your concern and um you can uh bring them some tomatoes and zucchini if they can talk to the uh owner of the golf course i don't know but we want to but, bring this to the yeah. forefront because we we see it now which if we're seeing it in the fall it can only mean it's going to be more intense in the spring absolutely and but there's it, different things to control the algae bloom or attempt to one of them which is kind of interesting is ultrasound and what it does is um it's safe for aquatic life and it can it can work on medium and large bodies of water and then it can um, it can predict and prevent the the blooms. And there has there are um, organic me organic products in which you can it's a powder you can spray or hand sprinkle that will kill the algae bloom as well. Okay, um, so that's that's an option too. Um, but also that you know you're you're. Using something, an organic, it's still a chemical, even though it's organic, it's still a chemical. That's just the way the, the makeup of it is. It doesn't, when it's organic, it doesn't have the severity of some of the non organic chemicals. Um, so your, your problem is caused by A. So you're using product B to fix problem A. There's still a problem. Right. And that's, you know, all of this, uh, any solution is either going to have, you know, advantages, disadvantages, going to take time, space, money, resources, what have you. And so, yes, there are options. There's like aer aerating the, the body of water. Um, there's things of like swirling the water effectively just, just because like if you, a lot of times in the ocean... It's in the Gulf areas. It's in the areas where the, the water's stagnant. Not more stagnant, stagnant, yeah. right? So have ag agitation, have um, something that will aerate the soil, or aerate the soil, aerate the water to get oxygen in there. So the the premise or the basis is algae bloom, algae bloom occurs because of an abundance of nitrogen, either in liquid form or granular, that has a attached itself to water, and then found itself into some form of a basin, river, or pond, or lake, and then it's settled to the bottom, and then it's done its chemical thing and caused the algae bloom, the excessive nitrogen, to feed the, uh, the, the stuff that's in the water and create this green slime that's on top. Right. And again, I think the biggest thing here is to be, be mindful about what you yourself are doing, your impact. There's instructions for a reason. Right. Um, so if you are adding something to your grass, soil, lawn, whatever, think about, you know, oh, more is better. No, you want to you want to follow the instructions. You want to be mindful. Well, goodness, more is not better now because it's twice as much, three <laughs> times as much now. So you got to cut back twice half as much as you're going to use just to get by. Right. And just, just like, you know, Joy and I enjoy living in harmony with our ecosystem, 
um, you can do the same and you can be mindful of your impact as how it literally like runs down the road into the sewer. So um, that is algae bloom. What causes it? Why it happens? And some things in which we can do to limit the effects of the uh, products in which we use. Well, Holly, night times are uh, getting colder. Days are getting day length is getting shorter. Not the day. The day is still twenty four hours. It's just getting darker sooner because of things are adjusting the way the Earth tilts. People often say, "Oh, days are getting shorter." As far as I know, they were still twenty four hours. They mean daylight. I know. They you you, you didn't describe it very well the other day <laughs> whenever you said, days are getting shorter. No, still 24 hours in a day. Uh, but uh, even though it's getting darker sooner, the lawn still needs some help before winter comes. Yeah, just because it's lawn or fall, we don't want to forget about our yards and those Japanese beetles either. They may be gone, but they're not far. They feasted on your roses and berries this summer. They laid eggs in your turf so that they can start again next year. Take a stand with Phylum's Grub Gone. Grub Gone is a non-chemical BT granule that specifically targets scarab pests and their larvae. Simply apply the granule with a spreader, irrigate it into the soil, and let it, the naturally occurring bacteria do its job. Not only is Grub Gone easy to use, but the it's the only non-chemical choice that effectively controls grubs And the best part about it, it's non-toxic to bees, butterflies, and other beneficial insects. So go to Grub, get your Grub gone. Uh, It has no label restrictions uh, for flowers or anything like that. It's safe to use. So go to BeetleGone.com. That's BeetleGone.com to get your Grub gone. And when you go to BeetleGone.com to get your Grub gone, use coupon code GARDENTALK10 to save 10% on your order and your lawn will thank you for more information please visit the wisconsin vegetable